Okay, what is CIPS? What do we know about China's future SWIFT killer? On 24th of February 2022, at 5am Moscow time, Russia launched a demilitarization operation on Ukraine. As a result of the operation, the Russian central bank is sanctioned by the West. Russia lost an access to half of its reserves, hundreds of billions of dollars. This is a financial nuclear attack on Russia. What do you think will be the consequences of those sanctions imposed on Russia in a global scale? One country that is watching the financial nuclear attack on Russia very closely is China. Whichever way you look at the situation, China is a winner. Watching what is unfolding, China will make sure that it will get rid of the US dollar, Euro, British pound or the US treasuries from its reserves to avoid the similar fate. This is a turning point in monetary history. Major Western currencies are seen as liabilities, not reliable assets anymore. Ban on Russian central bank reserves by West may encourage central banks all around the world to diversify away from the dollar, euro or pound or try to re-anchor the currencies to assets that are less susceptible to influence from United States and European governments. So if any country wants to avoid the US and European financial surveillance, what alternative systems available for them? There are a couple of systems emerging where central banks, corporations and other financial institutions can use. First one is SPFS. This is Russian alternative to SWIFT and CHIPS, which provides messaging, clearing and settlement services, both local and for cross-border transactions. And another one is CIPS, China's alternative to SWIFT and CHIPS. By the way, if you like what we talk about on this channel, please consider subscribing. Click on the bell button to get notified when I upload the future videos. So what is CIPS? The Cross-Border Interbank Payment System or CIPS was launched in October 2015 to provide an independent international yuan payment and clearing system connecting both onshore and offshore clearing markets and participating banks. It's based in the financial hub of Shanghai. It employs more than 100 people and has registered capital worth 2.38 billion yuan. It's 376.9 million US dollars. The important financial infrastructure is overseen by the People's Bank of China. The China's National Clearing Center, an affiliate of the central bank, is the largest shareholder with a stake of 15.7%. The National Association of Financial Market Institutional Investors, Shanghai Gold Exchange, China Banknote Printing and Minting Corporation and China Union Pay each own a 7.85% share, according to business registration information published by the TianYanCha.com. The foreign banks also have shares in CIPS, including a 3.92% stake owned by the HSBC Holdings, 2.36% by Standard Chartered, and 1.18% by the Bank of East Asia. What were the reasons behind the creation of CIPS? The system was created to boost international use of RMB, a mission started in 2009 with an initial focus on trade settlement. It became more important after Beijing initiated the ambitious Belt and Road Initiative that involves hundreds of billions of yuan worth of Chinese investment overseas. The use of the yuan increased after its inclusion in the International Monetary Fund's Special Drawing Rights Basket in 2015. However, its share is not in proportion with its status at the world's second largest economy, accounting for 18% of global gross domestic product. SWIFT data showed that the Chinese yuan accounted for 3.2% of global payments in January 2022, far below the US dollar, which accounted for 39.92% of the settlement, the euro on 36.56% and the bridge pound 6.3%. CIPS reported 2.68 million transactions in the first 11 months of 2021, an increase of 58% from a year earlier. The transaction value jumped 83% to 64 trillion yuan. What is the global reach of CIPS? After CIPS launched in 2015, 19 banks signed on to phase one of the project including 11 Chinese banks and 8 locally registered entities of overseas banks Standard Chartered, Deutsche Bank, HSBC, Citibank, DBS Bank, Bank of East Asia, BNP Paribas and ANZ. In January 2022, the system had 1,280 users across 103 countries, including 75 directly participating banks and 1,205 indirect participants. 
The operator said last year overseas indirect participants account for 54.5% of the total. Standard Chartered led overseas banks in terms of CIP transactions in year 2021. So how does CIPS compare to SWIFT? CIPS is viewed as a possible alternative to the US-controlled global settlement system which includes Belgium-based SWIFT and the New York-based clearinghouse interbank payment system, CHIPS. However, it's much smaller than SWIFT, which is used by 11,000 financial institutions across 200 countries or regions, including nearly 600 Chinese banks. Currently, there is more cooperation than competition between these two systems. SWIFT set up a wholly owned subsidiary in Beijing in 2014, while it also formed a joint venture with several affiliates of the Chinese Central Bank in early 2021, including CIPS. It looks like SWIFT is trying to balance the US pressure by integrating itself to Chinese financial system as much as possible. So what is the future of CIPS? China sees ban on Russian banks as a strong wake-up call and it will push the country to reduce its reliance on SWIFT to ensure financial security. Knowing the fact that most Western financial institutions are not exactly on the same page with their political leaders, ban on Russian banks might strengthen the connection between international financial institutions and CIPS. Swift sanctions on Iran and Russia, both important oil-producing nations, could accelerate the decline of the petrodollar system and facilitate yuan internationalization. CIPS is aiming to increase the number of directly participating banks, especially the overseas banks. CIPS provides messaging, clearing and settlement services for cross-border transactions for those 75 direct participants without using CV, SWIFT or CHIPS. Soon, there will be CIPS services wherever there is yuan. That's all from me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Like, share and comment. Till next time. Bye for now.